Welcome to EC Elimu, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed reflection and we defined it as the bouncing off of light when it hits a reflecting surface. Then we said all materials are reflect light except the luminous are materials. And another important thing that we discussed is the two types of reflection where we said we have regular and irregular. And then finally, we discussed how we can make a reflecting surface which can produce regular reflection using a clear and transparent glass. Then we apply a silver paint. Then finally, we paint it with a paint or a protective layer of paint which will protect the silver from fading off. In this lesson, we are going to discuss the laws which govern reflection, and we are going to realize that we have two laws which governs a reflection. Uh, my name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to state the laws of reflection, and then finally, Describe an experiment which you can perform to prove the laws of reflection. So before we proceed to the laws of reflection, it's important for us to note how light behaves when it hits a smooth surface. Like in this case, if you have a ray of light from let's say point A to O, this ray of light which comes from the source, let's say the sun, is called incident, incident ray. And now, when it hits a smooth surface, it will bounce off, or a reflection will take place. Now, the ray which bounces off from the smooth surface, like in this case, ray R O, is called reflect, uh, reflected ray, reflected ray, and then the line which divides the uh, incident ray and the reflected ray is always 90 degrees to the surface and it's called a normal line. Normal uh, line. It's not a ray, it's a line. It's a normal line. Now, another important thing, if a regular reflection will take place, then now the angle between uh, the normal line this one here, the angle between the normal line and the incident ray, this angle here, it's called angle of incidence. It's called angle of incidence and it's given a simple I. And then the angle between the refracted ray and the normal, this one here, the angle between the refracted ray and the normal, is called the angle of reflection and is given a simple r so it's important here to note that when a ray which is undergoing a regular reflection hits the surface the, that ray the ray which comes from the source is called incident ray the one which will bounce off is called the reflected ray and then there's a, a line which will be in between the incident ray and the reflected ray and that line is very important to know that it's 90 degrees, 90 degrees to the surface. And this uh, uh, line is called a normal line and it's not a ray, it's a normal line. Then another thing is that the angle of incidence is the angle between the normal and the incident ray, that is the angle of incidence. And then the angle of reflection is the angle between the normal and the reflected ray so it's it's not this one here the angle between the mirror and the incident ray no we don't use that one we use the angle between the normal and the incident ray that's what we call the angle of incidence and then the angle between the reflected ray and the normal is the angle of reflection so we have Two main laws of reflection. However, when we reach in form two, we will introduce the third law of reflection, which we call the law of reversibility of light. But for the purpose of this topic, 
we are going to discuss these two main laws of reflection. It's important here to note that for the second law of reflection to be observed or to take place, the first law of reflection must be observed. So without the first law of reflection, in this case, the second law of reflection cannot exist. And the first law of reflection states that the incident ray, the refracted ray, and the normal line all lie in the same plane at the point of incidence. What this means, if you have a reflecting surface like this, this is a reflecting surface which is smooth, which will give us a regular reflection. And then you have a source of light here. This is the sun. And this source of light is producing a ray, which is incident ray, or which is incident to this surface. This is incident ray. Let's, let me label it. Incident ray. Now, where it touches the surface, that is the point where the normal will emerge from. This is where the normal line will emerge from. And now when the normal emerge from this point, this is the normal line, and then now the reflected ray also will originate from that point. This is the reflected ray. This is the reflected ray. Now the point where all the rays emerge from here, yeah, that's what we call the point of incidence. This is the point of incidence. Now this law states that the incident ray, this one here, this one, the normal line and the reflected ray, they all lie at the same point or on the same plane at the point of incidence. Now, if you don't observe this law, then the second law will not exist. But if you observe this law, then now you will come to the second law, which states that the angle of incidence, remember the angle of incidence, we measure it from the normal to the incident ray, this one here. The angle of incidence, which we call I, this law states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Angle of reflection, we measure it from the uh, reflected ray to the normal. So the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So the first law is that the incident ray, the normal line, and the reflected ray all lie at the same plane or on the same plane at the point of incidence. This is the point of incidence. Then the second law states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Remember, if you don't obey the first law of reflection, then it means if you have a reflecting surface like this, the incident ray will come there, the normal line will, will be there, and then the reflected ray will be like that. So in this case, these three uh, points or these three, these two rays and one line. They are not at the same point of incidence, or they are not at the same on the same plane at the point of incidence. There's no point of incidence here. So in this case here of ours, let me remove this one because it's not important in this case. The, in the case that we have here now, the three, the two rays and the normal line are at the same point or lies on the same plane at the point of incidence, and then the second law now is observed where the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So the second law, you can simply write it in mathematical form as I is equal to R. So we have an experiment that you can perform to verify the laws of reflection. And what you do, you take a plain paper and then fix it on a softboard using obvious pin like that, like what I'm drawing here, you just fix that paper on a softboard like that. And then on that plain paper now, what you do, you take your ruler and draw a mirror line, you draw a mirror line like that. And on that mirror line, this is your mirror line, let's say M1, then on that mirror line, you draw a line which is 90 degrees to that surface of a mirror line. 
So a line which is 90 degrees to that surface, then you will call it a normal line. This is your normal uh, line. Normal line. Then now what you do, you take your protractor and measure an angle which is, let's say, 30 degrees. You measure 30 degrees from the normal like that. And then where that reaches, you draw your a line at that angle of 30, like that. So make sure you draw using a ruler. So if you draw 30 degrees like that, and then now this one will be your incident. Incident ray, and it should be directed towards the mirror line. Then now what you do, you take two uh, optical pins, pin one, you put it there or you mount it there, you fix it at that line, then you take pin two, you fix it also at the same line, like at two centimeters apart, pin one and pin two. Then now what you do, you move on the other side of the normal, then you position your eye from this angle here. You position your eye from this end. Then now you will be observing inside this mirror. If you have this mirror, you will be observing inside this mirror in such a way that you will see the pin 1 and the pin 2 in a straight line. So what you will realize is that when you view them, these two pins will be in a same line be below this mirror. If you put your mirror on that mirror line, and then you put your two pins there, then you will see the two, you will see the two pins like they are inside this uh, mirror in a way that the, 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 the pin one, the one which is P1 there, will be somewhere here, which is P1 prime, and then P2 will be somewhere here, which will be uh, P2 prime now what you do you will take another optical pin then you position it on this side where your eye is in such a way that it will be in the same line it will be in the same line like the two pins inside the mirror in such a way that if you look at the pin that you are positioning let's call it p3 if you look at p3 you will only be seeing P3, but it, the P3 pin will be hiding P1 prime and P2 prime. Then after you have put it in a way that it hides the two pins inside the mirror, then you take another pin, which is P4, you put it two centimeters apart from the P3 pin in such a way that when you look inside this, uh, or, or when you look from that point, you will only be seeing the P4 pin alone. So the P4 pin will be hiding P3 pin and it will be hiding P2 prime pin and P1 prime pin. Now when P P4 pin hides the rest of the pins, then now you remove, you remove the two pins, that is P3 and P4, and then you complete your line you remove them and then you complete the, the, the line between those two point two pins in such a way that they look like this. You join them into the mirror like that. So in this case, you will obtain uh, a, 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 a reflected ray. This will be our reflected ray. And now for you to confirm that it's a reflected ray, what you do, you just take a protractor and try to measure this angle here. You try to measure this angle here. And what you will realize, this angle will be 30 degrees. If you use the first one as 30 degrees, this one also will be 30 degrees. So this experiment has confirms to us that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection of these two pins, which is P1 and P2, when they are reflected inside this mirror and then the ray is uh, diverted or reflected to your eye, the person will see as if these pins were coming from the mirror, but these pins were not coming from the mirror, only that P1 and P2, they, 
the, the ray which was coming from them was directed to the eye. So in this case also, we have confirmed the first law of reflection in, which, in such a way that these pins, when they were in the same line, this line was at the same point of incidence where the normal is and where the incident ray is. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will look at image formation in plane mirrors.